they are really interesting for cross-platform malware, and as I said, cross-platform malware is the trend at the moment. Windows languages are still the languages in the scene. Many people start writing viruses in batch or Visual Basic. It's simple, it's easy, it's good to start. Scripting languages. Scripting languages like PHP, Perl, Python, Ruby, whatever, are very nice. And the interesting thing about, or the difficult thing, if you have a scripting language and you write your virus in a scripting language, you always have a binary and a source code in one. So it's hard to only show the source code it is the binary as well. And of course, we have the HLLs like C, very ex good example for an HLL, a high level language. I love C a lot. Many people code in C and C nowadays. But the best or the most respective thing you can do is coding your virus in a sampler. And that's what 29A, the group I talked about, it talked a bit earlier, coded their viruses in a sampler. It's the most difficult language nowadays, and yeah. Well, go on. So, which problems in the scene do we have nowadays? Well, we have one big, pro or one of many problems, but one problem is the size. There are really not many reactors out there. Um, you can say we have about 50, maybe a bit more, maybe a bit less, active VXs. So we really need new VXs. So please all write viruses if you are finished here. We need new people. So that's a problem. Because if somebody leaves, it's really difficult. And that's the next problem. We have a continuous change. I talked about the hobbyists. They come and go. They code a virus once a time and go again. So this continuous change really makes it difficult for the scene to keep alive. Because groups die, groups come, groups die. Decentralization. That's interesting. What is decentralization? Well, I mean that every group tries to do its own thing and instead of working together. For example, EOF project brought out its own forum. Now, 29A brought out a forum. Other groups make their e-signs. No group can do an e-sign for themselves, but they don't work together. This has changed now. EOF, Doom Riders, and RRLF are doing an e-sign together, which is really great, because now things hopefully get better and we access work more together. But it is still a problem that we access don't work that much together. At least it was in the last years. And it's based on a few hosters. So I talked about vx.netlux.org, a very important vx hoster um, located in the Ukraine, I think. Ukraine, sorry. And just imagine this hoster would be shut down. Many sites would go down as well. So we have maybe about two to three important hosters that host hundreds of viruses and source codes, which are really interesting from, 20 years, from the last 20 years. And if they would go down, it would be a disaster. So the relation between social engineering and VX. It's mostly used for worms. Social engineering is very important if you are a criminal or if you are a VX that just wants to show it's possible to code a very good worm. Imagine you write an email and it must look interesting. The text must be trustful so people will click on the attachment. So social engineering is very important for VXers because they must know how to write their worms, how to make the, for example, when you code a virus, a worm that spreads over P2P, the file name must be interesting 
and similar things. And of course, we actors need social engineering to be careful and to analyze everybody in the channel because in many countries it is illegal to code viruses. So we actors are very careful underground society and they need social engineering to save themselves. So conclusion of all of this. What I want to show here was first of all give you an example of some groups. We made this. You learned a bit about the different groups we have seen. You learned a bit about the spreading techniques which was very important. So we had a mix mixture of technology, spreading techniques and similar things and you get some internal information, for example, the IRC channels where you can look now, where you can inform yourself, or you can look for the bad bunny worm, or whatever. But what I really want to show you, what shall be clear, we act for we access coding viruses is a way of expressing themselves and it's a way of creating art. We access are not coding viruses to harm anyone or any system at least most reactors, and most reactors are whiteheads. It's like 95%. So, never forget the ideology of most people in this scene, in this little scene, and it's not the criminals, which are most people nowadays, are peaceful. So, the next time when you hear about a good virus that is spreading, don't think everybody is the same. There are people who code viruses as a way of hacking, as a way of writing code in a special way. Thanks. Okay, we have a lot of time, so we can make a little discussion if you want. Bam. Um, yes? Uh, just a moment. So, first, first question would be, in the beginning and the end you uh, told us what you are going to talk about or what you talked about, which is why c coding viruses isn't a bad thing, at least not necessarily. But the whole talk wasn't about this. Um, so. I still don't know. I mean, if you, if you code, if you're a hacker or something, and in this particular view of writing viruses, I understand that writing proper, writing good, writing elegant code shows some kind of skill, which is control yes. of the language on a hopefully high level. But first thing I don't get is what is the equivalent for social engineering? I mean, what skill do you show? Do you show the skill to manipulate people, to trick people, to... Um, kind of misuse a web of trust form in our day-by-day -day interactions with persons. I mean, what is the skill you prove when you do social engineering for like screening viruses? So this would be the first question. Well, you mean what is the skill in doing social engineering? Yeah. Well, isn't social engineering a skill? I mean, social engineering you can use exactly for coding viruses. Your virus gets better when you are better in social engineering. Oh, I'm, I'm not asking what the use of social engineering. I mean, what, what is the, the benefit, what personal cap capability you, you prove when you do social engineering besides tricking people? Because, I mean, tricking people, you... Yeah, yeah I think, um, well, you prove that you understand how people think and act. I mean, when you are a social engineer, I feel like maybe I should say what I define social engineering. Social engineering is understanding how people think and act and making yourself react in those things. Um, well, it's hard okay. to understand. Okay, got this one. Um, se second one would be um, like you, your best case scenario for the interaction of yeah. uh, writing um, viruses and the antivirus um, <coughs> companies. Uh, the best case scenario was you write a virus, send it to the company, and the company um, spreads the uh, patches and signatures and, um, to its customers. Isn't this basically uh, like protection money earning? I mean, basically it means that everyone who can afford protection gets it, and uh, the 
people writing viruses profit from it and the company profits from it, but all the people not paying money for it don't, well, suffer the consequences which you put into terms of stupidity. I mean, of course, um, a lot of people are like stupid behavior with their computers, but those people paying money maybe are too, but they don't suffer the consequences. I mean, when this is a best case scenario, I don't know how much is into the social engineering thing. And yeah, and the um, ethical Don't aspects. you think it's best case scenario or what? Pardon? Don't you think it's best case scenario? <laughs> D depends uh, if you afford the updates. <laughs> ah, more questions. Hello. At the beginning of your speak, uh, you you told me um, that you that that you we access don't uh, want to spread the virus. Yes. And, and you don't even uh, make binaries of it. Yes. Um, so my question is, uh, why do we why do we have troubles when it is true what you said with anti virus companies? Why uh, do we have troubles when you don't spread it? Why we have troubles yeah. if you don't spread it? Yes. Um, well, could it be like the question why it, it's similar to the question why it might be illegal in some countries if we don't spread it binary format? Is this what you mean? Why it is illegal? Why it is a trouble? Well, it's very, I would say it's very simple to make a binary rise about, um, out of a source code. So many AV companies think, hey, they show their source code and many people can just take the source code and make a binary virus. And that's a problem. We, the reactors, just code a virus to show the source code and to conduct knowledge exchange. We don't want to harm anybody, but there are those criminals, they really take our source code, put it in their viruses and spread it. It's, it often happened in the past that you saw a great idea by a reactor how to spread a virus. He never wanted to spread it. But then a criminal took this idea, coded it into his own virus and spread it. So what the AVers don't like about us is that we show new ways to spread viruses. And so we make their life harder. We show techniques how to hide your virus in front of the AV program. They really don't like this. They don't want to have people who show how to hide a virus. They don't want to have people who show new techniques. Of course, for us it means making security better. It's like with hacking. When you show a new vulnerability, you normally, as a whitehead, want to make the system more secure. It's like a VXer. He shows a new way to spread a virus and wants to make the AVS react, but they don't like this. They don't want new problems all the time. Is this what you mean? Yeah, okay. okay. This sounds like some hypocritical hypo organized crime, because you help them um, by spreading your, giving away your uh, source code. They make money with viruses because if they were weren't there, they wouldn't have any job. Uh, but still, they attack some of you. Uh, well, don't you think this is kind, of, first of all, unfair? And well, it's a bit similar to the question if we should release vulnerabilities, isn't it? I mean, if we now make a relation to hacking, we have this quite similar. In VX world, we have people who write a new virus and show the source code, and others can take it to really spread it. In hacking, you have found a vulnerability in whatever, Apache web server, and now it is a question if you really release this vulnerability, and then people could take it, of course, to attack an Apache web server. Or if you don't release this vulnerability. Now it is the question, you for yourself must be sure if you want to make it like full disclosure or not. And most reactors are for full disclosure. They are pro full disclosure, so they think by showing those viruses we make better security. And of course it's fun. Really, sometimes it's simple, just fun. They want to piss a bit at the AV and make their life harder because the AV companies have done a lot to break us down and so sometimes we are just angry and code viruses to make their life harder. But I don't think that, I don't think that 
to uh, 